And just just actually before I before I jump too much more into the overview here, just a quick housekeeping thing. Uh, this webinar today will be recorded, um, so it'll be available on subscriptionschool.com. Um, if you just join us again, the webinar is focused today on reducing subscriber churn. Excuse me. Um, and uh, we'll be doing about 30, 40 minutes of the subject material, and then we'll go into a Q&A session. Um, okay, so jumping back into the overview, um, proactive reactive churn reduction strategies. Also, we'll be emphasizing the customer service and the life cycle of the customer. Um, what this what this deals with is, is really how you're dealing with your customers on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and at the end here, you're going to be providing an action item list to do today to get you started on reducing churn. We're going to give you a lot of stuff to do, um, a lot of strategies that you can implement really right now um, to get churn lower and to position yourself to have lower churn if you haven't even launched yet. Um, so what I'm going to do first is let's check out this, this quote here. Then I'm going to give you a quick step, and then I'm going to ask you guys a question to learn a little bit more about you. So the first thing I want to point out is the mentality behind um, behind approaching churn. So, so take a moment just to just read this quote here. And for those of you who might just be listening in, I'll just read it out loud. The best acts of customer service are the tiny things that reinforce the customer's loyalty. This can be done daily, usually without any cost, and can foster customer retention, increase customer satisfaction, and yes, even grow your customer base. So what does this mean? Um, you know, it, it's, it's really about how you approach the situation of customer relationships, and it's about how, how you value those customer relationships. I mean, really what Peter Shankman is saying here is that by by doing everything you can um, from the big things from you know making big changes maybe in your product to the little things like um, you know taking the extra moment to look into somebody's account and you know make sure that their address is set up correctly because it looks like it's weird on one line or, or something like that um, by doing those types of things um, which is usually just your time or your attention uh, that's what's going to really foster customer loyalty and customer loyalty is really important because customer loyalty reads to customer retention. You know, I was just listening to a, another webinar on churn earlier this morning and uh, it was from RJ metrics and Zendesk. Um, RJ metrics is a data company who helps you track customer life, life cycles. Zendesk is a third party customer service platform who actually we'll be talking about during this webinar, but what they discovered through their work together is that most people who cancel, or most people who churn out of a business, they do so because they feel like the customer doesn't, I mean, excuse me, not the customer, the company doesn't care about them, which is mind blowing because um, as business owners, of course, of course we care about our customers. You know, it's, it seems so intuitive to, to us to say, yes, we love our customers, but so often people can maybe get caught up of working in their business and not necessarily on their business um, in terms of, uh, you know, improving that customer life cycle and doing those tiny things to improve that loyalty that customers can still end up feeling like they're not cared about. Um, and that that's what can lead to churn um, almost more than anything else. So the first thing I'd like to tell you guys to do is before you before you even start thinking about churn and how you're approaching it, uh, create a Zendesk account. So Zendesk, like I said, it's a cloud-based third-party customer service platform. Um, you might be taking emails right now at support, you know, at yourbrand.com, and maybe you're working through your Gmail inbox. Uh, that can be a, take a lot of time. It's not nearly as efficient. Um, I did that for a couple of years in 2010, 2011 with my first business before these solutions really existed in the way that they exist now. And after transitioning to those in 2012, 2013, um, it was mind blowing. These last couple of years of managing customer service teams and building customer service platforms for companies. Um, it's so much easier if you use something like Zendesk. And there's a lot of different companies like Zendesk. You don't gotta use Zendesk. There's, I think, Helpdesk, um, Odesk. Wait, that, that might be a freelance platform, but 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 check them out. And if you wanna learn more about some of these things, um, some of the potential platforms, we have a pretty good list on subscriptionschool.com. If you go into the customer service um, section here, uh, you can uh, read some more information about using Zendesk. Uh, for example, one of the ones I would suggest using it if you're not super familiar with Zendesk or any platforms like it, there's this guy here called Optimizing Email Support, Filters, Macros, and Automations. Um, this will go through how to how to use some of the things that we'll talk about today inside Zendesk. So as you're as you're thinking about churn, you know, make sure you 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 keep keep in mind that you've got this the resource of subscription school um, available to you. So, so you know, kicking off with Zendesk, you know, it's really easy to to use this with your existing business, even if you've already launched. 
Um, you know, all it really does is pull the emails out of your inbox and, and filters them into a, a nice interface. And that's the interface you see on the left there. Um, and you'll receive emails from Zendesk um, about your stats. You'll receive emails in Zendesk from your in Zendesk from your customers, and you connect other you can connect other cool channels like Twitter, Facebook, um, and so you know in the in the age of social media, if you if you want to be servicing people on Twitter and Facebook faster, you can do so through Zendesk. Personally, it's a really pain in the a huge pain in the butt for me to have to go on Twitter and go on Facebook and reply to comments and and messages and and tweets and direct message tweets. Um, Zendesk makes it a lot easier by pulling it all into one place. Okay, so what I would like to learn about, since it looks like most people are here now, is uh, I want to ask you guys a quick question. So what churn rate are you experiencing? So um, if there's a six option on here, I guess it would be none because you haven't launched yet. But if you haven't launched yet and you don't know what churn rate you're experiencing yet, uh, just go ahead and don't answer. Um, if you have launched and you are experiencing churn rate, maybe this is what you're getting from the Create Joy, Create Joy ja dashboard. Um, go ahead and leave your, your answer here. And I'm going to leave this up for just a couple seconds. If you want to hop over to your Create Joy dashboard and pull up your most recent churn number, I'll, I'll give you guys a couple seconds to do that. All right, we'll just leave this for a couple more seconds here. It looks like we just got a big spike. So it looks like a bunch of people just pulled in there, their churn rates. And I gotta apologize really quick to you guys, just in case it seems a little nasally. Um, I'm I'm a little bit sick right now, so <laughs> apologize if you hear any any coughs or any, you're annoyed with my nasally voice. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this poll here. I'll show these results. This is impressive, um, actually. I'm surprised that one in five of you are seeing one to five percent churn rate. That's that's phenomenal. That's really great. Um, so pat yourselves on the back. You know, for those of you who are seeing, you know, eleven to twenty percent or twenty percent and higher. Um, you know, this webinar will really help you bring those things down to below 10%. For those of you who are through 1% and 10%, I've got some really good suggestions um, uh, uh, in this webinar anyways that will help you bring that down as low as possible. But for those of you who are under 10%, I'll just say this right now, you guys are doing a good job. Um, so let me hide these results. And because we're thinking about our personal trade rate right now before we go into the webinar, I don't want to, you know... Uh, give you guys reasons that might not be your reasons. Let me go ahead and ask let me go ahead and ask you right now. You know, what do you think the source of your churn is? So what do you believe the source of churn to be? So it could be failing cards, you know, your product quality or cur excuse me, curation choices. Um, maybe operational missteps. And when I made that answer, what I meant or what I was thinking is maybe you've, you know, missed shipping deadlines or you forgot a packing list or um, there was something, you know, something in the monthly flow that you did wrong. So that's what operational missteps mean. Um, and then, of course, there's the last option. You know, you're unsure. Maybe you're still trying to identify it. Um, so I'll give you guys a couple seconds here to, to answer these. All right. looks like we just got about the same amount of people who have answered so far. Just give you guys a couple more seconds. And also, just um, just to let you guys know, I do see your questions coming through. So, um, also to answer these through at the at the end here, um, and I, I see all I see all your questions coming through, and they look like some good questions so far. Um, you know, someone so Sebastian asks, will it be possible to throw in some questions at the end? Absolutely, Sebastian, you can go ahead and ask the questions right now if you'd like. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and close this poll. Um, you can ask the questions right now if you like, and even if I don't answer them right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say about 20, 30 minutes at the end for Q&A. Um, so someone just mentioned there are none of the above in that last poll. So let me share these results so you guys can get a sense. So this is also surprising. Um, you know, I see about, you know, 10 or so cancellations or expirations of subscriptions a month just from failing cards in my own subscription, um, which represents about half my churn. I've only got a couple hundred subscribers. Um, in my current business, but um, I see that to be as one of my one of my biggest sources of churn consistently is just a failing of cards, which is really weird to me. Um, everything else, though, it looks like most people are kind of unsure. You know, they're still trying to identify what it is that's that's causing you this churn. You know, with product quality and curation choices, we'll be talking about how to do that, and with operational missteps, we'll be talking about some strategies to fix those things in this webinar too. Um, but I appreciate that this insight here. Um, 
just because we're in this poll taking mood, let me just let me just launch this last poll here. Uh, this will only be you know sixty more seconds of, of me asking you guys questions. But um, you know, what have you done to prevent churn? Uh, and you know, you know, maybe think about. I think you can actually choose multiple things in this in this survey. So if you have multiple options here that you you've been doing some customer service stuff and you've been doing box quality stuff, um, you can I think you can select both of those. So go ahead and select everything that you've done to prevent churn. Or if, or if, like I said, if you if you're still just thinking about it, that's totally fine too. If you haven't done anything yet, um, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, that's why we're here today. So I'll leave this up for just a few more seconds. It looks like a lot of people have already voted. Okay, I'll go ahead and take this down. It looks like we're we're all in now, um, and I'll show these results with you guys too. So it looks like a lot of people have been doing improving their customer service, um, kind of like an equal spread across. Customer service seems to be the biggest, along with you guys, kind of improving box quality with custom boxes or doing packaging better, or you know the whole packing assembly line. Maybe you've improved that, but um. This is good. It looks like you know a lot of you are taking these steps, but at the same time, you know a lot of you are. Still trying to figure out, you know, what can we do that's going to work best for us. Um, all right, so let's jump into this, really. So let's say you've set up your Zendesk. Let's go to step one here, or or rather the, kind of the, the foundational stuff here, um, which is kind of some, some basic definitions. So what is churn? I think we all know what churn is. Um, I probably should have defined this before I asked you guys a bunch of questions about churn. But churn or churn rate is just the percentage rate at which customers stop subscribing to your subscription or cancel. Um, so it's going to be calculated monthly or annually, but basically it's you know the percentage rate of people who cancel. Retention is the flip side of that. So retention is the inverse of churn. It's a percentage rate at which customers continue subscribing. So if you have a hundred customers and you and you, and twelve people cancel that month, then you have a churn rate of twelve percent, um, and you have a retention rate of eighty eight percent. Now, why does this matter is because if you want to grow, you have to uh, you have to get the people you've churned back, and you have to get more people than that in order to actually grow. So if you lose 12 customers and you have 100 subscribers and you want to grow, then you got to get those 12 customers plus more subscribers to actually grow the business. If you want to grow by 20% or something like that or 10%, then you have to actually go get 22 customers. So you end up with 110 subscribers versus you know uh, 88 and then plus 10 and 98 because then you'll actually would have shrunk. Your business actually would have, would have gone down. Even though you acquired about the same amount of customers, um, because you lost 12, you actually didn't grow at all. So that's why it's really important is because scaling these businesses, it's it's important to have low churn and high retention. So it's easy for you to go out there and grow your business and see month-on-month -month growth. So what is good churn rate? So some people have already kind of asked these questions. Um, uh, and I think there's this is a big range. Um, I think it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to answer. I, I hear so many people say different things about this. Um, to me, I think five to fifteen percent is generally pretty good churn rate. I think that less than you know ten percent is is usually best. Um, obviously, less than that's even greater. Generally, what I see normally is eight to twelve percent. So, use, so working with subscription businesses, I, I usually see somewhere between eight and twelve. Um, but I like to say you know it's it's a little bit more flexible since depending on the size of your business, I mean, you know it it, it could be. Uh, just a matter of you having only 100 customers and, and then losing 15. And uh, losing 15 customers in one month really isn't a lot of customers, but it's because your business is small that you see that churn rate. So it can it can really depend on that. But generally, I, I think that 8 to 12% is a decent churn rate area. I think we'd like to all get it down below 8%, though. Um, so cost for concern is anything about 15%. I think that 16 to 20% is, is you're getting into the red zone. You should start to panic. But you can use that energy to identify places of improvement. You don't really need to crazily panic because you've got some options um, and you don't have super high churn. So you know that most of your customers are loving it. But um, it is cost for concern. If you're churning more than 20%, which it looked like uh, you know about 20% of you are experiencing this, you guys are in the red right now. So this is what you're going to be doing this month, today, tomorrow. We'll, we'll be starting to get that, get that down below 20%. If you're churning out more than 20%, there may be something seriously systemically wrong. So maybe it's product offering, or maybe it's uh, pricing, or maybe it's, um, you know, those operational missteps are very significant. So uh, anything above that, I think you guys should you guys should really take some time, 
away from customer acquisition and, and really focus on churn because the time you spend on trying to acquire more customers, if you're losing one in five a month, um, you're, you're really going to be shooting yourself in the foot because even if you can go, if, even if you're great at customer acquisition, you can get something, you want to make sure that you can actually keep those customers um, for longer than the first month. Okay, so it looks like we've got a lot of questions coming in. I'm just going to go through these really quick to see if um, there's anything that's specific of these last couple slides here. So just hold tight with me for one moment. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and just delete some of these. Okay, so all right. Uh, all right. So someone just m mentioned here earlier on, I, I said during the poll, failing cards, and they, they want a little bit more information about that. So failing cards, Jessica, is, is uh, um, oh, it looks like Judy also asked this, um, uh, and Nathaniel kind of mentioned here, he said expired cards is, is similar. Um, so, you know, what I mean by this, and also Edward asked, this, asked the same question here, is when people's failing cards would be, um, you know, there, there's maybe there wasn't money in the person's account, and so that the, the the charge bounced, and they didn't actually get charged. Or expiring cards, I kind of slump those two things in the same way. Um, I kind of consider failing cards and expiring cards both a failed payment mechanism, a failed a, fa a failed payment method. So I guess I maybe I'll in the future I'll change that poll question to failing payment method. But basically, maybe their, their expiration dates um, come up on their card, and then they weren't able to renew because their card, uh, was declined. But any, any type of card decline was the source of that answer for that, for that specific question. Um, okay. So it looks like, it looks like everybody else here, um, it looks like everybody else here has, is, is more, um, is more general questions. Okay, so let me let me jump back into this. I'm gonna try to power through this here in the next 15, 20 minutes here. Method number one, let's set a good foundation. So when we're thinking about reducing churn, get yourself in a good place um, to actually have good customer experiences. The very first thing that you should be doing is thinking about expectations. Um, how are you spelling out your product offering? What's the retail value you're promising? What are your value propositions? The number one reason that we see people canceling across the, plat the platform of Cratejoy is because customers say it didn't meet their expectations. So what does that mean? It means that the products didn't come through for them. The curation, it was the, the experience the customers had didn't meet what they thought that they were gonna get for the price that they were paying. So um, you've gotta follow through with your boxes. And I have a dedicated slide our method number six relates to this method number one, but one thing you can do is get feedback from from your customers. So when a customer does churn or does cancel, send them a survey. You know, ask them what's what made them cancel, how the service could be improved. You know, what they thought about the experience. Now, you know, Cratejoy does offer this kind of internal survey. So when they cancel themselves, they've got to choose this option, um, or when you cancel someone through Zendesk or something like that, or you know, whatever your your platform is, uh, you choose the reason why they canceled. But what I think is really smart is to get more feedback from them down the line. So send out a, a survey, uh, you know, through email um, using SurveyMonkey or Wufu or something like that and get more information about it. Um, but generally, setting that good foundation really, really boils down to expectations. And you should be taking a lot of time to be looking at what you're telling people what they're going to get and how it's going to look and then actually look at your boxes. Does, does it actually look the same way or what do you need to do to really, um, to really hit that product offering out of the park? Um, so setting a good foundation is good and, and maybe you've got great, great, you've got a great foundation and people are getting what they expect, but, but maybe when they reach out to you, they're not getting the best customer service. The second method of doing uh, of reducing churn is making sure your customer service is phenomenal. And there's two parts of this: same day customer service and speed uh, um, and quality of customer service. We'll start with the same day customer service. The speed of your response is critical. So Forrester Research found that 41 percent that means almost half people. That means you know for if you have 200 subscribers, 100 of your subscribers are going to expect to reply to email within six hours. Um, when it comes to social media. Most people expect a response within 30 minutes. It's that's crazy fast. Um, but we're, we're you know what what are we talking here? We're talking about expectations again. Um, and expectations are, are those number one things that, that cause people churns when somebody didn't meet their expectations. So um, how do you do it? You use micro, macros. You use filters. You use automations. You use triggers. You use these tools that are built into a, a platform like Zendesk 
And like I said, check out our customer service uh, section of Subscription School and check out this um, uh, Macros Filters Automations Guide. Um, use those things so you can increase your speed of response. What's really cool about Cray or, excuse me, uh, Zendesk is that they'll actually tell you, you know, how fast on average you got back to customers. How, did that change from last month? Um, how did that affect ticket, ticket satisfaction scores? So um, using a third party is the number one way to do this. So if, you, if you're using your own personal email or your support at mybrand.com and you're using the Gmail uh, or, or whatever whatever mail platform you use and you're just literally manually replying to emails out of an inbox, stop doing that because you're going to be able to do a lot faster emailing and a lot faster customer service if you use a third party platform. Macros, filters, automations, I'll just touch on these briefly. Macros are just pre-made responses that act as a template. So it's almost like you click a button and it fills in a response. Filters are used within Zendesk. Sometimes they're called lists in other um, third-party customer service platforms. But all it is, it's basically a view or a, um, a specific group of tickets or emails or you know social media comments that all have been grouped together based on maybe time or maybe keywords or something like that. So you can put all the people who emailed you and used the word cancel into one bucket and you can go work on that one bucket at a time. So filters are really powerful. I use filters a lot in mine. Um, and having a good set of filters or lists or views or whatever it's called in your customer service platform is the, one of the number one ways to get, get done quicker because then you can hop on one topic at a time. You can hop on customer, you can hop on cancellations or then you can hop on replacements. Um, and you can do those things all at once without having to go through a bunch of different tickets and ha answer, you know, 10 different tickets and maybe every other ticket's the same question and, and you're getting sick and tired of having to rewrite the same thing. Using a filter, you can put all those things in the same bucket. Automations and triggers. Automations modify a ticket's properties at a specific time after the ticket's updated. So for example, if you've marked an email as solved, it will close that ticket after a certain number of days, or it will prompt a survey or a satisfaction thing or something like that. A trigger takes an action when a ticket is created or updated. So for example, you know, when someone emails you, you can build a trigger in Zendesk that will actually email them immediately back and say, hey, we've received your request. So um, that's something nice because people get that immediate reply. So going back to Forrester Research, I mean, that makes people feel like they're immediately valued. Um, they're immediately heard. So using these types of things in your in your platform will really help speed up those. So more on these a little bit. So um, use of macros to create single-click single, single click replies. This will greatly increase reply time speed. Um, filters will also greatly increase reply time speed. Some of the suggested views or filters I suggest are high priority. So I, I, like, to, I like to tell people to use um, a high priority view for tickets that are over 24 hours old, uh, a low priority view, which are maybe tickets that are 24 hours old or maybe under five hours old or something like that. Um, and then cancel related tickets. Um, so you're pulling the word cancel or refund, and you're putting those things in a bucket. Um, triggers, uh, you know, definitely uh, be using triggers to notify customers of received requests, and then use those automations to keep Zendesk clean. So like I, we kind of mentioned this, and I've already mentioned this guide here before, but check out that guide and you can learn a little bit more about those. I won't, I won't go too much more in depth here. Um, so like I said, there's two points to this, not only fast customer service, um, uh, but also, uh, superior customer service. So it's not just enough to reply quickly. You need to reply in a professional manner and make the customer feel valued. Um, avoid using slang terms and negative words. So trying try to use the word no or unfortunately or gonna or shoulda or anything like that. Um, you know, write it as cl clearly and as professionally and as positively as possible. Um, another suggestion I like, to, I like to throw out there for superior customer service is if a product is broken, just send a full replacement box. Um, a lot of times I get a lot of business, business business owners who say, oh, I had one product broken in the box and now my, you know, my, I don't know, should I, should I send them just that one product or should I send them a whole new box? I think it depends on your, your availability of products. So if you only have a couple boxes extra, maybe it does make sense to go ahead and pick out a product and put it in a new box and, and then send it off. If you do have five, 10 extra set aside for customer service, I have to send a full replacement box because we always get really great comments about uh, customer service when we do that. And I've always seen that throughout all my businesses is when we send a full box out for a replacement. People love that uh, for obvious reasons. Um, if a box was accidentally sent, like maybe you canceled them and you refunded their order, but you forgot to cancel their shipment, you know, I would just say let people keep it. Um, 
always err on the side of being extra nice for customers. And so, you know, if something was accidentally sent, don't request, don't send them a return label. I would suggest just saying, hey, keep it as a gift from us, please, or give it to a friend or family member. Um, usually you get really good responses to that, especially from grouchy customers who maybe are really upset and then they canceled and they're like, oh, I just got this box. You better not have charged me. And you could say, oh, we didn't charge you. That was our mistake. Please keep the box. There's no need to return it. You know, we really hope you enjoy the items. That can really change a, a grouchy customer to be like, wow, this, this brand is actually really cool. This company is really awesome. So, you know, it's all about inspiring that loyalty. Um, it's all about inspiring, inspiring your customers to talk about their experiences. And by doing a couple things like this, you know, sending full replacements, you know, accepting responsibility for accidents, staying positive and using professional language, that's the stuff that's going to really encourage your customers to maintain loyalty and to share their experiences um, with other people. Method number four here is remarketing to churn subscribers. So churn's a big deal, right? But maybe a lot of your, your customers are canceled for a kind of a sillier reason. Um, and so one thing that I would really like to suggest, suggest doing to get your churn down is to immediately start remarketing to those churn subscribers. You might be able to get them back within the same month, which means your churn for that month will be lower because you've, you've reacquired that customer. So you can get those customers back very easily. Um, you know, the, the, the uh, directions I have here it's, this is a little bit more of a manual process. Kratoy just released a new um, a new uh, integration with Mailchimp to have this done for you. But if you if you're trying to remarket your canceled subscribers under your subscriptions in your Kratoy dashboard, filter canceled subscriptions, and then export that current filter, and then upload that CSV into your Mailchimp account, and then you have a new list that you can start sending emails to. Like I said, Kratoy just made this a lot easier, so you will just be able to automatically um, you know, import your list under the Mailchimp app. But um, if you if you are using something that's not Create Joy or you're you know kind of curious about how to do this manually for whatever reason, this is how you do it. It's just a matter of exporting those subscribers, uploading them to Mailchimp, and then creating campaigns around it. Um, uh, you can you can put this into its own remarketing funnel. So maybe they get four or five, six emails over the course of a month. Um, you know, you, you, you can create a whole automation in, in MailChimp around these people where you, um, uh, where you can, you know, uh, send them special deals or send them reminders or do whatever you want um, over a long period of time. So when you do get a cancellation, you put them in this nice lead nurturing environment where you're able to uh, do as much as you can to encourage them to re-sign up. So method number five. So, so one of the other great ways I like to, to curb churn here is by doing teasers and spoilers. So one of the reasons um, uh, why I think these are really effective is because throughout the month, uh, you can keep people who are thinking about canceling still interested in your subscription. And on the right-hand side, this is an example from uh, my buddy's box, Toby Surprise, um, which I think they do a great job with their teasers. Um, I do a lot of teasers on Prosperly's Instagram, too, so you can check that out. Um, I like to use this one as an example. Um, but so, you know, while people love the element of surprise, giving them an idea of what the beginning goes a long way, not only is this useful for customer acquisition, but like I said, it's useful for churn because number one, it keeps people interested if they were thinking about canceling. Number two is if they did cancel, you can drop this image right into that funnel we talked about in the last slide, you know, that, that automation workflow or that remarketing to, to churn subscribers. You can use these sneak peeks throughout the month to say, Hey, you know, we know you canceled, but look at this awesome scrub we've got in our next box, $18 to $18 total retail value. Um, and you can use this to convince them to, to re-engage with your company, resubscribe. Um, <clears throat> and for those who are thinking about it, potentially stop, uh, stop them from canceling in the first place. Um, so uh, teasers and spoilers, some more examples of this. Uh, you can make a teaser landing page. You'll be surprised does, does this really well um, where they have like a little landing page where people can go ahead and click through the email so you can see on the right hand side there's an email with a, a teaser and email marketing um, and you can you can have them click through to an email to hit a teaser landing page where it shows them the items and then they you know they click subscribe or they click reactivate or you know or, or, or whatever it might be um, but you know you can get pretty sophisticated with the teasers uh, personally I don't do teaser landing pages um, mainly because, um, you know, I don't spend a, a lot of time, uh, on this business as I do, um, on other things. So I don't really have the time to devote, you know, building teaser landing pages, but 
from the anecdotal evidence I've heard from Yogi Surprise and from other businesses that have done this, it works really well. So if you do, if this is your full-time gig and you've got a developer that you can use, I mean, it might be a couple hours more of work um, each month, but it can be uh, it can be a pretty powerful asset for you. And even if you don't do the landing pages, I mean, you can still use an email marketing. That's a lot easier to execute. So, um, you know, you can show one teaser, you can show two teasers, and you can see here, one of the things I'd like to point out about the teaser in email marketing is the emphasis on the spots left and the emphasis on the retail value. So, you know, imagine this is going to your churn subscribers or this is going to your leads. Um, this becomes a lot, uh, a lot more compelling than just a picture of the box and saying, hey, this is a surprise. So, you know, consider about how you can use teasers throughout the life cycle of your customers, whether they've churned or whether they're thinking about churning. Method number six here kind of relates back to method number one. And like I said, um, you know, with method number one, um, setting a good foundation, getting that feedback. So when a customer returns, you send them a survey to complete and ask them what, they thought, what made them cancel, how the service can be approved, and what they thought about the experience. Surveying subscribers here, um, what, I, what I would want to emphasize here is, is, uh, is a more of a proactive approach. So before they churn, all of your subscribers get this survey. So, uh, you know, after they've received their boxes, you send them a WooFoo or a type form or a Google survey or survey monkey or whatever survey service you want to use. Uh, survey your existing and your churn subscribers and ask them about products. So how would you rate this product and why? So did you like this product and would you like to see it again? Would you like to see more items like this or fewer? So for those of you who think that people are churning because it has to do with curation choices, that could be your gut instinct, but you don't know if that's actually right. If you want to validate that assumption, then start start surveying subscribers, and, it's, and it can be it can be as easy as asking them three questions: a star rating, you know, a qualitative answer is why did they choose that star rating, and then would you like to see more items like this or fewer items like this, and maybe why. So it's four, maybe five questions, um, and you can start to gather a lot of really great quantitative feedback around star ratings and ratings like that, and also a lot of great qualitative feedback when people are explaining why they feel that way. So Getting surveys out there and surveying customers is one of the best ways to improve your curation. Or besides your curation, it's one of the best ways to actually identify what the problem is with your with your business and with churn. So we've got six methods here: setting a good foundation, uh, same day customer service, professional customer service, um, remarketing to churn subscribers, using teasers and spoilers. And then also surveying, surveying existing and insured subscribers to find out what the real problem is. Um, these six methods um, can be all implemented today. You could create these surveys today and you could send them out for you know last month, last month's box today if you wanted to. Um, so what are you waiting for? You know, just do it. Jump in here, um, start to make some teasers, start to make those lists in MailChimp, start to remarket to your churn subscribers, start to gather get data and feedback from these people so you can actually start to make intelligent choices around curbing churn and reducing churn for your own subscription business. Um, assignment here for you. Uh, there's a lot of stuff for you to do, but the number one thing I'd like for you to do, in case you haven't done it yet, is in, within the next week, create a Zendesk account, create some views, some macros, some triggers, some filters, etc., and then also create a canceled list in MailChimp. So that's you manually doing it because you don't use CrayJoy, or that's you know using CrayJoy's new integration, whatever it is. Make sure you've got a list in your in your Mailchimp or your email service provider, um, your email marketing provider rather. Um, make sure you've got a list dedicated for churned or canceled subscribers. Um, and then next week, send out a comeback and save email. You know you've got this list set up. Send them a promotion. I just sent a promotion to my canceled list this morning. Um, and you know, I, I make sure that's a part of my my weekly flow. Like every every week or so, I I, I do a quick remarketing to cancel subscribers. So next Tuesday, um, make a point to do this yourself. So um, now we're gonna jump in the Q and A session. I know you guys got a lot of questions. I can see a ton in here right now. I'm gonna leave up this action item reminder list um, so you can be looking at this. <coughs> Excuse me as we um as we work through these questions. And we've got about 25 minutes left, so it looks like we'll be able to do all these questions in uh, just a amount of time. So Lindsay first asks, do you recommend Zendesk or Hootsuite? Um, I don't think Hootsuite does customer service and for emails. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not totally sure. But Hootsuite's good for social media automation. Um, I have used – I've never used Hootsuite for customer service. I've only used Zendesk. So my recommendation would stay with Zendesk just because I'm not sure. Um, Joanna mentioned she's she's about at about twenty seven percent churn right now. 
and they, her customers say they love the box, um, love the customer service, but they can't afford it. But she also says she's also one of the less expensive boxes in the space. Joanna, I might suggest doing those surveys because maybe they're fibbing a little bit or maybe there's something else um, that's really keeping them. You know, I get a, the, my number one reason right now is financial reasons that people cancel my box. Um, and it looks like, you know, uh, Ella, your, your question is similar to this. It's more expensive and so the majority is due to financial problems. So is mine. My box costs about $50 a month. So that's why it's not surprising to me. I mean, I think that me getting... One month I had 3% churn, which was ridiculously low. But every other month besides that, I basically had 7, 8, 10. This last month I had 12. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think that range is, is pretty acceptable for, for where I'm at. And because I always get that reason, it's financial reasons, it's financial reasons. I'm not surprised. Um, oh, and I see here, Trish, you mentioned this too. What I was just doing is like for, for Trish and Ella and, and everybody else and, and Joanna and everybody else was asking about financial reasons. Get these surveys out. Let's get some more data around these customers and see if that's actually the reason why they are um, why are they why are they churning. So Tina asked, uh, most of my churns from people who ordered two boxes by mistake because they didn't realize their subscriptions automatically renew. Um, Tina, yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, it will affect your churn numbers within Crayjoy because it'll they count all subscriptions. Um, I that's really weird because in I uh, maybe maybe you try to make it clear during checkout, or maybe make it clear on your site. I, I've I've had that a couple times, um, maybe two or three times over the last year. So a very 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 small amount, you know, less than one percent of my churn ever has come from that issue. So I might try to work on your FAQs, um, you know, work on your checkout flow. If you have a coupons and stuff like that, or if you have a special checkout page, make it maybe make a note at the bottom that says this is a recurring subscription. Um, and do some things to really sure that up. I think that's a very unique reason to have most of your churn. I think it's very strange. Um, so, so work on your presentation of the fact that you're a subscription business. I think that will be the biggest thing to help you, Tina. From from my understanding across the whole Crater platform, that reason is actually very low. Um, Mike Anderson here said, "Mine's failing cards too," um, which is a which is which was in reference to the poll here about why do we have most where do you most most of your churn come from. Um, and so Mike, you know, one of the things that I do with failing cards is, so, you know, Crayjoy is really nice because I send reminders. Um, but I'll also, you know, put those expired people in, in their own bucket in, uh, in MailChimp and send out special messages to them a little bit different than my regular churn customer messages. Um, and maybe give them extra sneak peeks or do some extra stuff to, to really remind them that the subscription's there and that they're not going to get it unless they re-up their cards. Because those people probably wanted to keep the subscription, they just forgot about it, or like I said, they just haven't got the new card yet in the mail. So doing everything you can throughout the month to remarket those people is, is one of the ways that I, I catch a lot of those people back in the business. So Edward asked, do I know what Yogi Surprises churn rate is? I don't know what Yogi Surprises churn rate is. I, I, I think it's around 10% or so. Um, like I said, I mean, most subscriptions I see that are, are pretty successful have somewhere between 8 and 12 doesn't mean you can't be successful with higher, but um, I think I imagine that theirs would probably be around that amount, but I'm not totally sure. Um, so is an overall experience larger than usual churn in January and February? Yes, that's actually a really good question, Joanna. So, you know, she took a big hit after the holidays. Um, uh, and so she, the second question is, is it possible that my 20% plus churn rate is, is, uh, is because of this time of year and it's not a systemic issue? Joanna, yeah, it might be. I think that... Maybe, um, you know, I don't know how many customers you have, but if you only have a couple dozen or a hundred or so, and you had a bunch of people buy gifts, maybe 20 people got gifts, um, or something like that, you had about that many, um, you had, a, you kind of have a nice bump of about, you know, 20, 30, 40 or something like that. Um, and then in January, a, lot of, a bunch of those people canceled. It might have been just because people were buying one-time gifts. You know, I, I think that that would be very likely that it's not a systemic issue and it's just because of the, the time of the year. Um, it depends on how many customers you have, though. You know, if you'd have, if you if you've been seeing that twenty percent plus churn rate over the last couple of months, you know, I think that it has probably does have to do. I think it would be related to a systemic issue at that point. You know, now in March, I think that you're we're done with the holiday rush. So if you see this number again uh, at the end of this month, then maybe do some more digging. But I think that's very likely. Um, 
uh, someone asked here that the presentation will be posted. Yeah, it'll be posted under the the, the video section of Subscription School, um, and you'll be able to watch the webinar here again. So it'll be posted. Um, so Nathaniel asked mentioned here. So so uh, so yes, uh, expired cards is the highest problem for me. So we need Creature to give us failed card drip campaign. Other than there's ten emails that are, that are the same. So what I would suggest, Nathaniel, is don't expect that from Cratejoy because you're not going to find any payment processor that's going to create a drip campaign for you. I mean, Chargeify is not going to do it. Shopify is not going to do it. You know, you're not going to get anybody to build a drip campaign for you. What I would suggest is what I suggested, I think, to Mike is to export those people and build a drip campaign in your own Mailchimp. Um, that's what I do, um, and that's you know that's how you're going to keep your branding. Um, every single payment processor is going to send payment reminders, just like Cratejoy does, and that's kind of the standard. But if you want to, if you want to nurture them a little bit better and create a drip campaign with different content in your branding, then you know you're not going to get a payment processor to do that. Whether that's Cratejoy or, like I said, Shopify or Chargeify or you know anything or Subly or any of the other companies out there, you need to create a drip campaign yourself, which is what I do, and that seems to work a lot better for me. Um, uh, also with, with ahead of time, knowing expiration dates, I think Creature actually has something built in. So it gives people a 30 day warning saying, Hey, or it's a quick reminder, your card's going to end in 30 days. I don't know if you can export that list through Creature, but, um, that's definitely a good idea to be paying attention to those emails that are being sent out, um, and getting a reminder kind of preemptively set up. Also, you know, just for everybody, just so everybody knows about these expired cards, because there's this big change to chip cards, this last couple, these last couple, um, uh, these last couple months, a lot of people's my churn went up because of that. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of subscription business owners who have also their churn go up these last six months because there are these new chip cards that have just been sent out, and a lot of people didn't re up their cards. <clears throat> okay, so Katie, you Katie, you also asked about financial reasons, so I, I'd say suggest the same thing with you know Ella and Joanna and everybody else. Um, that talked about financial reasons. Start doing surveys to find out if that's the real case because people might be telling you financial reasons over email, but if you can give them a, a survey a week after they canceled or you know you 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 put them in a better environment to give you more more feedback, um, do that and see if that changes the skew for financial reasons. And you know the other thing to keep in mind with financial reasons for everybody is it might not just be your price that's wrong. It might just be the fact that they don't have the money to subscribe to it. So it might, you know, don't always consider pricing or, or financial reasons to be a problem with your pricing. Um, so has, has anyone ever pointed out that it's really odd that you sound like the voice behind Blue from the from movie Rio and the actor that did the voice is also named Jesse? Edward, yes, I, I get that in the last couple of webinars for some reason everybody thinks I sound like Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> so that's not the first time I've received that comment. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, automatic quote, I received your email res email responses always really annoys me, says Nathaniel. Does it really make people think that you're replying faster or does it annoy people? Um, I mean, you look at Zendesk data and you look at the, the, the reason why they do that automatically for their Zendesk users. And by and large, they, seem, they think that that is one of the best things that you can do. We've received your request emails. Um, so if it annoys you, you know, I think that might just be the data set of one. I would, I would, I would continue to do that. I mean, personally, I'm kind of on the same page as you, Nathaniel. I don't really like them, and, and when I see them, I'm like, okay, that's not really helpful for me. But from what Zendesk says, is that by and large, by doing that, by telling customers that you've received um, their their request, it makes them feel more valued, and it makes them more likely to uh, to be patient with your requests. So, so yeah, I, I would keep that going if, if you do it. I think that even though it might annoy people like you and me, I think overall, um, it's, that's the, it's the best choice. Um, uh, and super simple. I mean, it's not, it's not spammy really. Um, and it helps because sometimes you don't know if your email actually has been received. Okay. So I know a large successful sub subscription box company that sends replacement products in the next month's box. Um, what do I think about that? Uh, I don't really like that. Um, frankly, because then you have to go through all your boxes during packing and drop in replacement products for specific boxes and make sure it's not mixed up and stuff like that. I think that's kind of weird. You know, I'd wonder how big and successful that company is. If they're really big and they're sending replacements out to 10,000 people a month and they're having to go through all these boxes and do that special thing, that'd be a crazy operation. I think it's easier to just send it out throughout the month. But I mean, if that works for you, Joanna, I mean, I mean, don't totally go ahead and execute it. Um, 
Lindsay says, how do I get customers who canceled for financial reasons to resubscribe? Maybe offer them a deeper discount. You know, maybe it's an extra 10% off their next box. You know, it's not, not an extra 10% off for life, but it's like, you know, an extra 10% off uh, for their next box. I, I actually do that. It's a part of my cancellation flow. I, once I confirm someone's canceled, I send, them, I send them an email and say, hey, you know, you've been canceled. Here's the here's a ticket number for reference, and if you ever want to come back, I'll, I'll, we'd be love we'd love to give you an extra ten percent off for your next box. Any suggestions for content for for the remarketing campaign uh, for email for emails sent to canceled subscribers? Yeah, so Joanna, same thing. I'd offer deeper discounts, maybe more sneak peeks. Um, you know, this last month I offered a second sneak peek to my canceled subscribers. That I didn't offer my regular leads list, so it makes them feel a little bit more exclusive. So stuff like that. Um, you know, besides that, I think putting those people in a drip campaign and putting them in a welcome flow or not a welcome flow, but a, a, a cancel flow and getting more information from them and telling them straight up, say, hey, your opinion is really valued. We'd love to find out how we can make the service better. If you answer this survey for us, we'd give you 15% off your next box or, or whatever. Something like that. I mean, get creative with it. Uh, you can do a lot of different cool things. Stephanie says, would you suggest teasers on and for social media on Instagram or always just direct to current subscribers? Uh, I suggest doing it on social media too. So I usually do one teaser a month to my my leads list and my and my social media, and then I do my second teaser um, to my canceled subscribers as well. So so my canceled subscribers usually get one, and then a second email about it. My regular leads list and my regular social media following just get that one. Can you put your business on hold until you get it fixed, Pat? Yeah, you totally can. I mean. I've got a friend who put his business on hold for about two years and just relaunched it and still has about 100 of his 200 customers who all still opted in. So you can, I mean, that's just a real, that's a real balancing act. It really depends. It really depends on your business. What sort of, what sort of discounts do you find best for coupons for remarketing? I think, I think 10% or so is, is usually pretty good, especially if you already have a discount that you offer people. Um, you know, satisfying that need for canceled subscribers to get us extra special discount, I think is, is really powerful. So I would say test it. I found that for my own business, an extra 10% works well, just as well as, um, you know, 20%. And what you can do in Zendesk is use tags and you can find out if it actually works best for your business. So when you're tagging people, let's say you, let's say you confirm some cancellations and you offer people 10% off or something like that, and they email back and say, okay, I'd love to take you up on that. I think I'll subscribe for next month's box. You can use a tag like the word saved and then a tag 10% off, and then you can keep track of that data. So at the end of the month, you can see everybody that you've tagged with 10% off and saved, everybody that you've tagged with 20% off and saved, and the total number of tickets. And so if you see that 60% of the time, if you offer people's 20% off, they resubscribe, and only 10% of the time, if you offer people 10% off, they resubscribe. Obviously, you should offer them a deeper discount because a sheer amount of revenue um, will be will be more beneficial for you. So you can use that third party platform, Zendesk, or any any third party platform that allows tagging and data tracking to test the offers you give people. And then also you can do the same thing with Mailchimp with click through rates. And uh, you know if you have a custom UTM, uh, you know you, you don't have a, like a little tracking code from Google in your cancel um, welcome flows or your cancel flows rather. Um, then you can really see what the conversion rate is of those emails and you can see which email is converting best. So, so Ella says here, we're a new company. We're at month three. We've got about 630 subscribers and about 14% churn rate. Majority of my reasons that financial reasons at 49.99. Would you say my churn rate's high? Uh, you know, Ella, I, I, 14% churn rate on 630 subscribers. It's a little high. Um, if you could get that down to 10%, that'd be pretty solid. Um, but 50 bucks a month is high. I mean, it's expensive. That's an expensive box. I mean, my last business escape monthly, it was 50 bucks a month too. Um, our churn rate was around 12% or so. It really depends on the customer cohorts. In other words, the customer groups, like where did you get your customers from? I might try to identify where, you get, where you're getting your customers from. Um, if you've got a bunch from a deal site, then maybe, you know, you should expect higher churn rate. I, I feel like you're in a goodish place. I don't, I wouldn't be totally panicking if I were you. But I would definitely be trying to improve that customer experience. I mean, you know, I had lower churn rate my first couple months than I did my last couple months because earlier customers are usually more loyal. So, you know, at 14% churn rate and at only month three, yeah, I would suggest trying to get some more data around it and why they're canceling. You know, it might not just be because of financial reasons. Or if it is because of financial reasons, maybe you need to beefen up your product offering a little bit. 
I mean, if you have a $50 box, you probably get the margins for it. So Jessica says, we have a lot of cancellations. Quote, we just want to test it out. How would you remarket it to, be, for, to those people? Yeah, I always thought that's interesting. Um, people who say we just want to test it out. I think that's kind of like a nice way of saying we're not interested in getting this. Um, so if I was going to remarket to those people, I might do sneak peeks mainly from those people and try to kind of pique their interest with some other kind of value adds or maybe, um, you know, give them the opportunity to uh, get a special discount or, you know, give them the opportunity to sign up for an extended period of time. Maybe it's a product you don't offer your normal subscribers. Like they can, they can uh, get um, three months at a special rate because they've already tried. That's kind of like an upsell you do during your cancellation process. We're like, okay, well, we can lock you in for the special rate for the next three months. So you can kind of like artificially increase your retention. Um, but I'm not suggest doing something like that. Because if they, they want to try it, that means they like your niche, they like your branding. And yeah, maybe try to just get them committed to a longer period of time subscription. John says, what's the normal acceptable net profit so I can charge my subscription? John, I think you should be walking with 30 to 50% net profit each month. Um, that'd be a good range. So Heather says, if customers are canceling due to financial reasons, should you consider lowering the price of your box? I think we've talked about this quite a bit. Like I said, I don't necessarily think it's just about the cost of the box. I would, I would suggest doing more survey data to determine if that's the actual reason. Pat says that my customer didn't know it was a renewal. So Pat, I, I think it's, you're kind of in that other person's boat. You know, make sure that the fact that your subscription box is clear on your website. You know, um, make sure that you are explaining it clearly. Um, uh, during the checkout process uh, that you are going to be renewing people on this date. Make sure you've got that in your FAQs. You know, do everything you can to make sure that you've really, um, to make sure that you've really made sure, made it clear that you, you guys do renew. You should have a terms of service that talk about your renewal products, et cetera, et cetera. Katie says, I'm having a lot of subscribers who immediately cancel. Yeah, there's, there's a, so the immediate cancellation thing is a huge issue. Um, the piece of advice I give, uh, is usually look kind of, kind of upsets some of the people in, uh, in, uh, yeah, Cray Joy and, and general people that I talk to. What I like to do, Joanna, is remove the self cancellation option. Um, and the way that you do that is through some funky code in the back end. And I'm not totally, I can't totally recall how to do it, but it just basically takes that button away. The way I make make that okay is um the the way i make that good is that i have same day customer service i mean people get emails um within like two or three hours for my business and so i make sure that people who want to cancel get really really fast customer service i've had very very few complaints about this over the last year and i've worked with you know thousands of customers at this point so um that's what i do to prevent that but i would put maybe put another gate there you know have them answer a survey um you know, maybe have a chat that you get through Zendesk and when you see someone hit that page, maybe you have a dedicated customer service person who immediately engage, engages those people in chat. But self-cancellation is, is a big pain in the butt. Um, and it's it's nice because it's easier for customers, but it's bad because maybe someone does get it and maybe, maybe they will want to keep the subscription, but they cancel right away and then they forget about it. Um, and so there's a couple different options to get around, to get around that. My, op, my, my preferred course of action is to remove that option and to have excellent customer service. Um, and so that, that's what I do. So, so, so yeah, Joanne, I'm reading your comment here about November, December subscribers. And I think they are just a little bit more volatile. I think that's, I think that's a, 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 an accurate perception. Um, how many times does Cratejoy try to recharge the customer's cards? Yeah, I think we, I think we do it. Um, Sebastian, I think we do it once over the course of 10 days or something like that. Um, uh, I'll have to look at the FAQs. Um, I'm, not, I'm not totally sure off the top of my head. So Taylor asked, is there a payment processor that's generally better than Stripe? You know, Stripe's pretty good. I mean, Braintree is the only other payment, process, payment processor I've seen some really good results with. So I would, I would suggest Braintree if I didn't suggest Stripe. Um, so I would love to hear how your audience is marking to find their subs. Um, so Sienna, I think... Um, it says you have a marketing question. I'm trying to trying to just read through this here and see if I if I got the whole idea. I mean, we do a lot of social media marketing. Um, we do a lot of email marketing. Do a lot of you know lead capture through opt-ins and through giveaways, and then we use this email list to to push subscribers to us. What's a good average number of months people stay subscribed? 
uh, Guido, I, I think that this depends on your subscription. I, I like to shoot for, for 10 to 12 months. Um, I'm saying that right now because most of my customers stick around for eight or nine months, maybe, maybe 10 months. I'd have to look at my data. Um, but I think that's a good amount of time. Um, I think four or five months is even good if you have a good margin and you can easily get more customers, then that's not really a totally bad, uh, life, life, lifetime, uh, total lifetime. But I think you should shoot for everything north of six months. And I think if you can get higher than that, that's, that's better. So you can also include an FAQ of sorts, an automated reply that might help customer service with their problems before you even respond to them. Yeah, Joanna's right. I mean, one of the things that you know you should do in your your ticket received email is give them a link to some self service options. I think it's a really good idea. Will a coupon to cancel subscribers encourage them to repeatedly cancel and get more discounts? Uh, Judy, good question. No, because it's only a one time coupon. I mean, I when when I have a can a, a subscriber who cancels use a discount and then they cancel again. I don't offer the coupon to them again. And you can restrict that coupon to being only used once um, through the coupon generator in CrateJoy. So you can make sure that people don't use that more than once. Jessica, you're welcome. I hope it was super helpful for you. Um, we have the cancellation button on our website at the moment. Do you think that people will get mad upset if they notice we just remove it? Yeah, Sebastian, I might suggest communicating that to people. I launched my business without the cancellation button. So it was never even kind of like a, it was never kind of expected. Um, you might want to announce it to people or, you know, that's a little bit touchier since you've already launched. Um, you can, I, you could see what happens if you, if you do it. I think it's, like I said, I get some flack for, for suggesting that option because people are like, Oh, you shouldn't do that because you know, it's really, it really pisses people off. And I understand that, but the amount of people it pisses off is significantly lower. The amount of people that I save each month, you know, for the people who, you know, try to cancel, um, or who want to cancel, I usually save about half of those people, um, you know, 30 to 50% a month or so. And if those people didn't get gated by my customer service team, then I probably would lose all those people. My churn would probably be up near 20% instead of at 10% or 12%. So, you know, I think it's worth it. And I think the, the, the occasional flack is worth it to me. So it's, 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 it's going to be a value measurement for you. Um, so when will we be able to use PayPal, says Andy. I'm not really sure. I know it's on the roadmap, but um, I'm not totally sure about that. I don't work on the tech team. I'm just a, the education guy. So Pat says, I get a lot of canceled due to gifts or financial. Um, uh, and Pat, Pat also said, how do we stop that self-cancellation? I mean, you can write into Crate Joe and ask him how. I'm not totally sure how myself. I had a developer do it for me. So yeah, I mean, yeah, Sebastian, I, Sebastian says, I feel like people will get mad if we announce it. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's kind of delicate. It depends on how many hundreds of customers you have. I think that, I don't know, it's, it's difficult for me to give you advice on this since I don't want to give you bad advice because I don't know what your customers are like. But for me, um, like I said, what I do on my cancel page is I make it very easy in my FAQs. I make it very clue, clear in my terms of conditions, how to cancel. And I mean that very clear um, from the start. So, um, you know, I, I think that just making that change now and quickly, and then being very proactive about getting that, that getting that in front of people saying, this is how you cancel. We guarantee you response within 24 hours. That, that, that might be a way to kind of stem that, that anger from people It's saying, Hey, we're changing our cancellation procedure. You can submit a ticket through your, through your account page, but, um, you can't automatically cancel but you will get a response in under 24 hours guaranteed. Um, and, you know, we really appreciate you guys. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, so uh, Nathaniel has a good kind of interesting thing here. He says, don't remove the button. Just have the button tell people to email you. Then no one sees it unless they want to cancel and you don't piss off current subscribers. Nathaniel, that's an awesome idea. So what you do is you keep the cancellation button, but you turn the cancellation uh, link in, instead of it being a to the link that cancels a, the subscription, maybe it's, you know, mail to colon support at my, my business.com. And so it generates the email and it sends you an email, but, um, it doesn't remove the button. Nathaniel, I think that's, that's a, that's a really interesting idea. Humbly asks, um, I'm getting cancels right up my sh uh, shipment notification email. I recently turned this off. What do you recommend? Um, I mean, you're going to get cancellation spikes when you ship, when you renew, um, and when, um, and when people get the box, you're going to get those spikes, you know, uh, you know, you're getting those spikes no matter what. So I think that giving people shipping notifications is important, Humby, and I would keep that on if I were you. 
um, usually than expected. So I, I get those little spikes too. So where's the cancel button so I can go ahead and remove it and quickly before I get subscribers? Edward, that's going to be when you go into the designer, you go, you go ahead and you click designer, you go into the code section and you go to the account page. There's some specific little, uh, little field that says show cancellation button and you just change that word to no. Uh, there is a create joy FAQ about it where Amir, I think created a, created, showed people how to do it. Um, uh, but, or you can email support at creature.com and they can help you figure out how to do it too. So the last question we've got today is Guido says, on Profitly, you say that the retail value is $80. Is that the only retail value for the products inside the box or do you also count the cards curation in the box? Oh, Guido, that's, that's only the products inside the box. I don't count my box cost, my time, anything like that. It's just the MSRP of the items I include inside the box. Um... So I always think that the service costs money. You know what I mean? It's like we're spending time on this, and it should it kind of bumps up the retail value, and we package it, and we do a lot of stuff to make the experience nice. But um, I, I I just include retail value just just based on the items we include. So it looks like that's all the questions we have today. Thank you guys um, so much for asking these. Um, if you want more help with the cancellation button thing, it looks like you know this was a that was a big topic of of, of uh, conversation today, you know, talk to the support team at creature.com. They can help you, you know, turn it in, into a, um, they can help you turn it into an email button or they can help you turn it and just remove it if you want to. But, um, okay, looks like Sebastian just made another note about this. So let's just read this question real quick. So uh, that's a good idea. Would there be some coding required? Yeah, probably. Um, also, when I think about handling a cancel through email instead of a button, if a customer's email is saying, I want to cancel, blah, 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 it feels kind of rude to respond with something like, we understand, but how's this 20% off coupon instead? Um, yeah, so, you know, you got to be delicate with that, Sebastian. Usually the way I frame it is, thank you so much for receiving this request. Did you want this cancellation to take effect now or later? Um, and so usually, you know, it depends on when people email, but, but I'll either pitch them, do you want it now before your March box ships or do you want it after your April box ships because I see you were just renewed. I mean, you, you have to get that information from them anyways because if you do cancel them, they might have a, a, an existing order. So I kind of ask them, like, do you want this cancellation to take, a, take effect for your existing order or after your existing order has been fulfilled? And then I say, also, by the way, if you don't want to cancel, here's a, here's a coupon. But because you've gotta, you have to kind of get a little bit more information from them anyways, I kind of I get it like that. Where I'm like, you know, is it this month or next month you want to cancel because you were just renewed? Um, so that's that's what I'd suggest. But play around with that a little bit and try to get a good flow for yourself. And um, I think as long as you're really professional, fast, and courteous in your email, I think that you're you're going to find that people are, are are totally fine as with you responding and not just immediately cancel them. Um, thanks again for all these these comments you guys are you guys are putting forward right now. Really appreciate the uh, the feedback. I uh, hope, hope it was useful for you guys. This whole thing was recorded. It'll be up on Subscription School in the next couple of days here. Um, if you've got more questions, head over to the customer acquisition, or excuse me, the customer service section um, and, and check out some of these things. We got a really great infographic on reducing subscriber churn that I put together with Tolu um, that talks about how churn works and how to reduce churn and a lot of other a lot of other uh, strategies. So check this out and check out these things. If you've got more questions, you know, uh, head over to facebook.com slash subscription school. You can go ahead and ask questions on the wall there. Um, and uh, you can get updates from us, updates for upcoming webinars and that type of thing. And I'm happy to engage with you guys as often as possible. Um, uh, the PowerPoint will also be on subscription school too. So you'll be able to get all the information, the recording, um, and every, every piece of information I give you guys will be available um, totally for free on subscriptionschool.com. All right, guys, thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and end this webinar today. If you guys have any other questions, I look forward to hearing from you guys on our Facebook page. Otherwise, good luck with your churn.